Last time, from chapter 3, we um, figured out how to make ionic compounds with the right formulas with monoatomic ions or one atom ions. Now we're going to get involved with the polyatomic ions. This is exercise 3J. Now you have to remember that we're going to use the same rules for ionic compound formulation, which is that the overall charge has to be zero and you have one type of cation and one type of anion and your job is to try to put them together to have the smallest uh, ratio of cations to anions. It makes it a lot easier if you memorize the bolded polyatomic ions that are on page 58 because those are the ones that we're going to encounter most often. Alright, so let's take a look at some problems and see how we do with them. This is what's going to be asked of you. What are the formula units for the uh, ionic compounds that are formed from these combinations? Alright, so write these down. Give it your best shot. Hit pause. And when you come back, I'll show you the way we'd like you to be working with these. Okay. Hit pause. Alright, we're back. So, as always, you have a cation and an anion. And when we ask this question, the cation will always be first and the anion will always be second. Cation, anion, cation, anion. So, you have to be able to know what the charges are on anything that's a group A element. And once you have the charges on the polyatomic ions, well, it should be pretty easy to put together. Sodium, you know, is a group 1A, so sodium likes to make a plus 1. If we have a plus 1 and a minus 1, well, we put the formula together and it's pretty simple. NaNO3. Simple. Alright, now let's go with B. B, potassium, is also in group 1A. So, it's going to make a plus 1 as well. So, if we have a plus 1 cation and a minus 3 anion, how do we put these together? Well, the idea here is that the total charge has to be 0. If we have 1 that is a minus 3, don't we need 3 of them that are a plus 1? So, how do we write 3K plus 1s plus 1 PO4 minus 3 as a formula. And there's really only one way. This little 3 tells you how many K's and that tells you how many phosphates. So that's the formula. That tells you that there are 3 K plus 1's combined with 1 PO4 minus 3. Alright, let's try this one. You can't know what the formula is until you know what that charge is on that anion. Since this is a group 6A, we're going to be making a minus 2 charge on the sulfur. So, we have a single plus 1, but we have ammonia, which is a plus 1, and then sulfur, which is a minus 2. I hope you understand it should be pretty simple to recognize that you need two ammonium ions for every one sulfur ion. And how would you write two ammoniums? Well, this is a key. Three, this little subscript of three says there's three K plus ones. So if we have an NH4, we have to put this in parentheses because remember, this whole thing stays all together. And that 2 tells you how many, just like that 3 tells you how many. And since we have one sulfur, that's it. That is ammonium sulfide. We don't have to worry about the names, but you do have to be able to write the formulas correctly. Alright, next, calcium is a group 2A two electrons in its outer shell. It wants to lose both of those to make a calcium plus two. That's an entire ion onto itself. So this is the cation, this is the anion. 
That's a one-to-one -one ratio to get the charge to even out. So how would you write that? Simple. CaCO3. Calcium carbonate. Okay. Two more to go. Magnesium is in the same group as calcium, 2A, so it likes to make a plus 2. Alright. So we've got a plus 2 and a minus 1. It's clear we need two of these, right? To even out the 1 plus 2. So how would you write two OHs? Well, you put parentheses around the OH because the O and the H have to be attached. That's what a polyatomic ion does. It has these two attached to each other. A 2 that's down here lets you know that you have two of them. And so that's one magnesium plus two hydroxides to make magnesium hydroxide. Okay, one more. Aluminum, because it's group 3A, has three electrons in its outer shell. It wants to either have zero or eight, so it can either gain five or lose three. It's easier to lose three when you lose electrons. You end up making a cation. So these are the two. We have a plus three and a minus two. So how do you make these even out? Well, we did this last time. That three can come down here. That two can come down here. Or you can think of six is the least common multiple. And so you want to end up with a total of plus six on the cation side and minus six on the anion side. And there's only one way to do that. Two aluminums, each of which is plus three, ends up with being plus six. And three sulfates, each of which is minus two, ends up being minus six on the anion side, plus six on the cation side. It evens out. That's the formula. Is that what you got? Hope so. Practice up and make sure you remember to memorize the polyatomic ions that are in bold on page 58. That will make your life a lot easier. All right.